Nat 20. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Nat 20. Uh, this is the randomized series. So it's going to be pretty crazy and wild. Um, and random. The purpose of this was it's just all about improv, so no one here knows about anything that's going to happen in the future. So cut us some slack if we get some things wrong or there's some plot holes or stuff like that because there's a none of it's hole. planned. There's a plot hole. We'll just walk through it. There's yeah. A hole. So I think what we'll do is we'll just quickly go around and give a refresher to everyone's characters. So we'll start with you, Sora. Okay, Tony. Yes, hi. Uh, <laughs> refresher, I'm Sora again. Um, I was I was with my master that, uh, I forget his name, but the big black dragon dude. Uh, Dalmac. And then he sent me with you guys to make sure... Um, what was our quest after that? <laughs> Your quest was... I legit forgot everything. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of okay, so... Remind you guys what went on. I don't I'm going to start with the recap. I should start with the recap first. Yeah. All right, so basically... Oh, if you want to go that far back. Hi, my name is Sora, and I'm confused. What happened? You guys' quest right now is you've agreed to the Dalmac, and you've went along to ensure it happens, that you destroy the city because the city is... Um, the city's magic is withholding the dragon in his domed cell. Mm-hmm. Yes. And all the magic of that city is orchestrated by Gavin Whittingham, who is the arcane artist there. Um, yeah, that was what... The original task, though, was just to acquire dragon's blood so you guys could uh, uh, give it to him and he could fix the whole problem because the city is exploding every which way here and there um, as pockets of magic are being pressurized together and then exploding. That's right. So, yeah. Yeah. That's why you're there. Yeah, that's right. Delmac, my master, sent me with these hooligans to make sure that we destroy the town and set him free because uh my boy is being is a, is a you know is a hella captive so <laughs> uh so i play Nif- nifend he's a ro- he's a rock gnome rogue who's also a sailor and he's kind of an idiot like he has no idea what's going on half the time and he loves to start fights and brawls. He thinks it's a great way to get to know a, a place. <clears throat> uh, I'm committed to any of my crewmates, but not to ideals. And, yeah. I like to drink. Very nice. Love to drink. Alcohol. Cool. So my character is Anos. I'm a halfling who's also a hired killer but i'm also trying to turn over a new leaf by seeing a spark of good in everyone because i committed a terrible crime and i hope to redeem myself by doing that um i came to i forget what the city's called avec cordon avec cordon to complete some of my bounties and turn them into the criminal liaison there I am Mia Gwyn, the helpful. I am a sea elf paladin who grew up living on a farm, plowing the fields, <laughs> horrified of water. I am extremely helpful. I am not dumb, like I thought. Uh, uh, my quest is to help everyone as I go along, and I'm not quite remember how I got roped up in all this, but uh, I am determined to save that dragon because the dragon said he needed help. Indeed, he did. Uh, that duck is not here, but he plays Zanzi. <laughs> also, that Duncan guy is just not here. The very chaotic one. The pirate. Room. Yeah, he's the only super chaotic dude. And, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to specifically talk to Clayton, but... I'm... Um, well, so, the quick <laughs> recap here is... In the last session, you guys just got back from the city after investigating the boat ship where uh, Zanzian determined Brachus to be his first mate and make a new vessel for him. Uh, so he's off doing that. <laughs> so you guys are back at the city. Um, yeah, after leaving the broken up vessel, <laughs> um, Brachus is currently repairing or making a new one. Not sure of the plan on that. You guys then went, uh, I believe it was investigating because you found a map 
from one of the, the mates leading you to the city, leading you to a stone in the city or a house that was not there. Um, you did find that there was a stone missing or a stone unturned uh, on the cobblestone ground and nothing was in there. But you found, I believe it was Miguin, caught the trail of um, wine and bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, banana. Uh, and so you followed that scent to find a, like a small goblin man living in a really tiny home <laughs> yeah <laughs> with a chest in the window oh yeah we had to strike <laughs> those two guards there was two guards before you guys reached there that you pretty much just blew past I used my vines on them yeah one of you used misty step um, and stuff but you got past them they didn't want you to get past they chased you to this little goblin man's home to where you ensnared them and basically tortured the goblin and the guards <laughs> and then left hey. with the chest. <laughs> Give me my chest. Hey. Um, my chest. <laughs> later on, you guys then went to the marketplace where you did yourself some, some of your own exploring. Um, you met up with a goblin and then a, sh- a shady goblin in an alleyway who was giving, I believe it was for Anos, directions to get to where he needs to go. Um, to complete his own uh, quest. Uh, it was then Zanzian and... Was it? No, that was Anos afterwards, I believe. You guys went to the Dazzling Horse, where you spoke to a horse <laughs> running a bookshop. Oh, yeah! Trying to decipher a message that he could not decipher, but he did indeed give you a book to decipher it, if you can learn to read Undercommon from the book. Ah. Uh, so weird. Mia Gwyn, Nifhand, and uh, Sora. You met the Rakshasa, yeah, Malice and Chaser. That guy was hot. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's hot. Uh, he then led you the way to Gavin, as to where you need to go, where you wanted to and go. The path of love. <laughs> <laughs> and killing naked, naked dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> Along the way, you made multiple attempts to um, woo him, so to speak. And uh, he eventually led you to a hut with a door to where you found out that it was a doorway to many different areas of the, the land. Um, Mia Gwen I made a boo-boo. and <laughs> Anos were the first ones, I believe, to investigate. And Sorry, Anos. Anos opened and closed the door. He got a, I believe it was a snowy lands first, yeah. desert, and then he got a market inside a mountain. Which then he took a step into. Almost immediately after Mia Gwyn slams the door closed, opens it back up, and it's a forest, and Gavin is in there picking some lovely berries or such. Anos only sees that the door behind him closed and vaporized into nothing, and he has no way back from wherever the hell he is. That is where we will begin this session. (laughs) So... Uh, we'll start with Anos. Currently, you're in a mountain market, uh, a marketplace. Uh, definitely, it's a shady one. You know your marketplaces very well. This one is all about dealing illegal uh, items. Uh, specifically, it's items not so much as currency okay. or slavery or anything like that, just trinkets and such. Uh, but it is located inside this here mountain, which you know is a mountain because you can see various cracks and stuff leading into the skylight. And just the general shape leads to a uh, mountain point. It's mostly run by like Kenkus and kobolds here. It seems are the main market dealers. You have some like humans in robes that you can tell, you can see like from their nose and mouth shape that they're human. Okay. But they're definitely concealing their uh, Identity. identities. And various other beings as so. Almost everyone here has a hood on or a hat on, and it's covering their face. Do some of them have like, <coughs> the big nose, black glasses, mustache <laughs> thing on their face? Um, it's vibrant with life, though. There's tons of people going to all these different stands and making dealings, tradings, bargaining. You can see some people are getting kicked out by bouncers, which are every single bouncer you're seeing is a Goliath. And they're at least seven to eight feet tall, no shorter. That's... More than double my size. <laughs> <laughs> it's like four of you. So I'm three feet tall. I'm tall. Are you a gnome or a dwarf? Half one. Half one. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Carry on. I'm tall for a halfling. Um, 
I look behind me and see that the door is no longer there. Um, pretty fucking pissed about that. <laughs> uh, I don't think that I can do anything about that, so I just pull my hood up and try and find who I came here for. Uh, I don't think I was given a name. No, you were not. Um, but you would know the symbol to follow. Um, if found, you just have to look for it a bit. Okay. Yeah, I'll kind of look around, try and blend in with the crowd. Okay, uh, roll investigation for me. That's a nine. A nine? Um, Brain start. So far, you're looking around. You're kind of oddly walking by some market stands, shifting your eyes over to their wares, looking down like around the corners of these stands to see if there's any symbols or markings. Yeah. Um, takes you quite a while, about 30 minutes of doing this and you're getting kind of sick of it before you do see um pretty much to the direct uh edge towards the northeast uh one of a it's a smaller stand nobody's manning it it looks like it was uh no one's claimed it yet Mm -hmm. or set up shop and you do see like a scratched out uh diamond shape with a circle in the middle okay definitely edged in with a, a knife well, now that I have some kind of a lead, I'll start searching around the, that uh, stand. Okay, uh, you go around to where the shopkeeper would usually stand. You see two drawers. The left drawer, the knob's a little loose, and it's kind of janky and easy to open. The right um, looks very well constructed and sturdy. Okay. I'll pull out the left drawer, see what's... Up with that. All right, you immediately pull the left drawer, and as you do, the knob comes popping out, and with it comes a key. And I'll check the right drawer. Um, As you pull in the right drawer, you have to give it quite a tug, and it only moves a slight amount, and just goes... Moves maybe like half an inch out. Okay. I'm going to check, like, underneath the drawer, see if something is catching on it. Uh, uh, you look underneath, nothing's catching on it, but it just looks like it was pretty much squished in here. Like, okay. this stamp was built around the drawer. Huh. Can I see inside? No. No? Not yet. It's just confusing. Uh, I'm going to check the, the symbol on the ground, see if there's anything peculiar about that. Uh, you look at the symbol on the ground, and it looks normal just it's etched in you feel it up and there's no holes or it doesn't feel like a loose stone or anything okay. nothing noticeable there hmm kind of lost right now <laughs> i wonder see. why <laughs> <laughs> i can't believe duncan did that <laughs> uh, i'm gonna try like, turning the knob on the right drawer maybe Okay. Uh, you go to turn the knob and you hear, uh, as you turn to the right, about a uh, quarter of the way, you hear it click. But it's very soft. Okay. I'll give it a slight tug, see if it gives way a little bit more. Uh, as you tug on it, it jiggles, but it doesn't give away. Okay. Uh, with that knowledge, I'll see if it's like a uh, like a safe. I'll turn it to the left till I hear, hear it click. Uh, as you begin... Slowly and steady turning it to the left, you get about just over halfway from where you were, and you hear another salt click. Okay. At this point, you turn it, yeah, it's a code lock. And pretty sure there's going to be a third number, so I'll turn it to the right again until I hear a click. Uh, You begin turning it to the right, um, and you go pretty much almost in a full circle until you do hear another click. And then the drawer just pops open ever so slightly about an inch it's someone's diary uh can i see inside by this time uh you pull open the drawer and you see that there's this tiny little notebook inside (laughs) it is their diary (laughs) um as you inspect it further it has the same sigil that it's on the ground uh you open it up and it's a small map but there's just one single sheet of paper in this okay and it's a small map leading you through the marketplace to what seems to be a hidden passage. I'll tear that piece of paper out, 
put the journal back in the drawer and lock it up. Okay. You just, so you now have a map. You know the direction to get to this secret entryway. Okay. It is located under the stand in the middle of the marketplace. Not conspicuous at all. No. <laughs> but you get these weird like X's and almost checkpoints along the way. It doesn't lead you in a straight line. It leads you through the stands. Okay. To that center. Uh, I guess I'll follow the map and see what's at these checkpoints. Okay, the the first checkpoint leads you to a stand. It's run by a kobold who seems to be selling various, like, fruits and vegetables, and they look completely rotten and rotting away. Mm-hmm. Yummy. Currently, he seems to just be chopping up some of these rotten fruits in his stand. Sea elves love rotten fruit. Uh... I feel like I really need to do something with this guy. Uh, I don't really know, so I'll just move on to the next checkpoint. Okay. Uh, as you move on to the next checkpoint, you notice the kobold gives you a glare quickly, but then goes back to chopping his food. Um, the next checkpoint is another stand, but this one is selling weapons. Uh, you see nice, what it looks like to be refined, uh, reconstructed, and repolished various sword shields, pieces of armor. Okay. Some of the, uh, some crossbows. Um, but there's no, further looking at, like, the crossbow section, there's no bolts or arrows for any of them. Huh. And it's run by a Kanku. Actually, while I'm here, I do want to buy something. Uh, a net? Because you owe me a net? I don't owe you shit. Santa knows you a net. Oh, Duncan's dude owes me a net. <laughs> He's not here. Uh, <laughs> does he have like a long sword or a rapier or something like that? You see about four or five. Well, you see about three long swords that are strung up from his stand and one rapier. I'll ask him how much it is for the rapier. Uh, the Kanku then uh, slides one of his hands under the table and pulls up a list that he then hands to you, and it's uh, various pricings of all the items in his shop. Uh, the long swords uh, he's selling for uh, 300 gold pieces. Damn. And the rapier he's selling for 150 gold pieces. What the fuck? <laughs> Inflation, dude. <laughs> A good joke, Tony. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. Mm. Right. The Kanku this whole time is staring at you. The fuck? I, I know I'm missing something, but... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> ah. made, I made a boo-boo. <laughs> um, I thank him for showing me the prices but I say I'll pass for now Uh, and I'll try talking to him about um, what's the guy's name Millicent Millicent Chaser okay how do you what do you ask him Uh, I'm just like I have a friend uh the top side that helped me out here, you know, some a big Rakshasha, very handsome. Uh, would you know anything about him? The Kanku uh, puts his hands back down under the, the stand, and you can hear like what seems to be scribbling or scratching. And then he brings up another note and uh, just says no as he hands it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Rejected. Okay. Uh, can I insight him? You can. What are you inciting him for? Seeing if he's telling the truth. Okay. Or writing the truth. <laughs> can I tell from his penmanship if he's lying or not? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be pretty hard to determine, but... 19. 19. Uh, he's giving you a pretty stern look, um, and it's very bland and straight-faced. It's very hard to pick out any details. Okay. 
However, you do see that one of his eyes is almost ever so slightly vibrating. It's just his right eye. Hmm. I'll thank him again and move on. I doubt I'm going to get any info from him. All right. As you're about to turn away, the Kanku does turn away as well, but you see that there's... Uh, as you're w- walking past the stand, you pass by the empty holders that crossbow bolts and arrows should be in, and you see two coin purses inside them. Huh. If I was a good thief, I would try to steal them, but I'm not very uh, dexterous. <laughs> so I'll just keep note of that and move on. Okay. Uh, as you move on, uh, you then hear uh, the swords from the stand, like two of them clang uh, as you're about to leave, and it catches your attention. Uh, as you turn and look, you see the Kanku staring at you again with his hand nearby the swords that he just clanged. Coin purses. I think you're supposed to take the coin purses. I'm going to approach, and I'm not going to take the coin purses. I'm going to try and discreetly as I can put some coins with the, with the pile. Okay, as you put some coins with the pile, uh, Kanku then... Uh, goes in, he takes the holders off his stand, and he just dumps them off to the side uh, near you yeah. and puts them back in. Um, and then gestures that you leave and turns around. <laughs> now the coin purse is right there for you to grab. I'll take the coin purse and pick up my coins. You tax. <laughs> <laughs> you acquire your gold back and the two coin purses. Um, as you look in the first one, you see it's literally just full of gold coins. The second one, it has more gold coins, but it also has a small uh, rolled up note. I'll read the note as I'm moving on to the next stand. Uh, as you move to the next stand, you read the note. It is. It just says that... No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have received um, success of your contract. Here's your payment. Okay. Uh... And then it's just signed by nothing. There's no signature on it. Cool. They make these things so cryptic. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this gold you acquire is the exact payment that you were promised. Okay. I'll just uh, I'll swear under my breath for all this uh, secrecy. And then... Buy the long sword now. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh yeah, you've acquired um, 50 gold pieces. Oh. I'll make my way... How many checkpoints were there? There's three. There's three. I'll make my way to the third checkpoint. Kind of peruse his stand. See what I can find out. All right. As you make your way to the third checkpoint, it is an uh, elvish woman who... Uh, you can only tell she's a woman just by the facial features. You can see they're very feminesque, um, but she's wearing a hood as well. Um, and she almost, it's not like the hood shadowing her face, but it's like there's a type of magic doing that. It seems very cloudy and misty up there. Uh, and as you approach, almost immediately, she just slides you a book, and you see the other book that you have get pulled from your grasp into her hand and put under the stand. Okay. Uh, since I'm very confused by this point, I'm just like, <laughs> I just let it happen and I'll take the book. All right, uh, you take the book, you open it up, and it just leads you to one of the mountain sides to the north. It just leads you in a straight line there. Okay. With an X. Well, since I missed out on the first checkpoint, I'll do a little loop, go back to that guy, and uh, check out his fruits. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You go up, and as you're approaching, he does give you a quick glare and goes back to chopping... uh, the exact same vegetables he was chopping before. Yeah, it hasn't. Se- it doesn't seem to have changed. Um, and uh, roll investigation. Uh, dirty twenty. Uh, dirty twenty. As you kind of push slightly some of the rotten fruits away, you see underneath that there's um, crossbow bolts and arrows. And each one of them has that sigil you saw at the stand. As you continue to the next little section that has fruits and stuff, 
you pull those away and you see that there are not as many arrows, but the same ones, but they have been bloodied with their tip or the tips are bloodied. Okay. Um, I take the arrows. Which ones do you take? The bloodied ones or the non bloody <laughs> ones? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, I'll take the bloody ones. Okay. Uh, you pick up the bloodied one, and immediately the kobold walks over, um, and he gestures, like, into your chest. <laughs> Fucking stab yourself. <laughs> yeah, I poke myself with it. Okay, uh, as you give yourself just a little nick, um, you draw some blood, and um, nothing happens to the arrow, but the kobold then uh, opens up his mouth, pulls out his tongue, and there's another pouch. <laughs> what okay. the another coin for you to take I'll, I'll take the pouch from him and uh, leave okay. <laughs> must be so good do you take the arrow with you or do you just I'll, I'll put the arrow back okay, you put, place the arrow back and the cobalt goes back to cutting and you now have this new pouch as you open it up there are various rubies and emeralds in here cool they look it. clear cut and pristine. Like very high quality. Yeah. From what you can tell. And there's, there's a group of about four or five of them. Bless you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm all movies. This is a trippy fucking trip to the mall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely not what I was expecting when I came here, but I'll I'll take it. I got paid. Uh I'll take those pouches and I'll follow the book. Uh, to the mountainside. Okay. Um, and then as you travel in the mountainside, we will go to Mia Gwen, Mifhand, and Sora, who currently are actually still in the city, um, not have ditched one of their companions. And Zanzian, we ditched Zanzian. <laughs> um, however, you do see a note from Zanzian <laughs> posted on the on the little, little hut that has the door. Oh, did you go Whoa. With- did you go with uh, Melissa? Uh, does anyone want to read the note? I will read the note. Yeah, I'll read, I'll note. read it too. Uh, it just states that, as uh, Zanzian said, um, I'm sorry, everyone, but I'm going to check on my first mate, Brackus, to make sure my ships and uh, crew are made in proper preparation. Oh, yes, first mate, Brackus, that <laughs> yep. dude we fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, Gavin is now with you, being as he got interrupted in his berry picking how funny is that that we just it's like opening the door and catching someone like showering <laughs> just there picking berries confused i love it oh so um my this my heroes have you brought me my blood we lost a guy should should we go find him no okay <laughs> hey, hey yeah. quick team huddle everyone yeah uh, don't listen <laughs> uh, I'll pull her in a huddle. We're, we're killing him, right? Like, we're supposed to kill him? Right? I mean, Wait, I, I thought we brought blood to him. I don't recall. <laughs> right? I thought we were supposed to, like, kill him for the dragon. I thought we were bringing blood to him. I know, we, but we said we were going to bring blood. Then we went and got the blood, and the guy said, Kill him in the city, and then free me. And then we do both. Well, no, because to free him, we have to kill him in the city. Oh, oh yeah, because he wants the, he wants the blood. But we, but we need to kill him. Yeah. We sound the same. <laughs> no, but, but you I and I this are, voice first. Time. No, you and I are very different. <coughs> okay, I don't pick a different voice. You're a dragon. Why do you sound no, like me? I am a female dragon. I or, am a female CEO. No, you're a bitch. I hope everything is so going let's try okay. So with this blood then, and I pull out the, a beer bottle. <laughs> uh, not knowing if it, whether it's the blood or just beer. It is now Tony it's, talking. Do you have the blood, or yeah, or not? Uh, we'll go give it to you in this back alley over here. <laughs> I ge- I gesture. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you, that we do a nearby <laughs> back alley. Um, there's no reason you can't hand it to me here. I assure you, uh, this is well, a safe location. It's gonna look. Oh, oh my berries are so distracting. 
<laughs> All these berries are distracting me. We should go to a dark alley where no one can see us. Did we walk through the door? No, I'm standing at the door. Yeah, I say... We walk through the store at my toes behind us, and we should probably... We don't want to be lost like our friend is. <laughs> I can't oh, believe... Then I walk through the door. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you walk into <laughs> the, the forest. Hold the door open still. You walk into the forest that Gavin was picking berries in, and it's a very nice forest. You get a very fresh breeze of, of uh, oxygen and pine. It's very nice, very welcoming. You feel very a one with nature right now. Um, you're standing in the forest. <laughs> okay. Gavin is looking a little displeased at how you guys are just handing blood right now. Um, he's more like, what are you doing? Uh, he thinks you're an idiot, Sora, for <laughs> suggesting him to go into a back alley. I mean, come on. But uh, he's at most annoyed right now. Um, what are you doing? Should I hand him with the blood? No! Okay. Why? And I put the beer bottle back in the Listen! <laughs> hey! It's me, Gwyn! I'm do- talking now! Hold on. You do remember I recruited you specifically to get this blood to me, yes? Yeah! Uh, sure. And right now... <laughs> Right now, you are not delivering on that promise. We have it, uh, but it counts. <laughs> it's in this, uh, <laughs> it's in, it's in <laughs> different boys. Uh-huh. I had this one. It's in a, it's in a, a basement nearby. <laughs> Who is talking right now? I don't know. If we just, uh, if we just go meet in this, uh, you know, in the back alley, uh, we can give you the blood. Uh, we just want to do while there's people around. Be kind okay. of weird. Uh, okay, I'm stop you there. Look, I don't under fully understand your group's humor. <laughs> However, I do not find it this funny in the joke. slightest. I am still, <laughs> still talking. I do not find it appealing in the slightest. I just want the blood. Nathan's like, oh, I have an idea. Group chat. <laughs> I, I don't actually yell at that then. <laughs> um, Give us a sec, will you see? <laughs> oh, for sweet sakes. Title. Fine, just be quick about it. Uh, quick, come back to the door. Okay, I give him the blood, and then I cast Wall of Fire. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's, it's the spell scroll you gave me. Oh, no, I no. That'll burn everything up there. I, I, I have, I have a person. <laughs> oh, my God. Stop. You're telling us that's what you want to do? Let me... Uh, I say it's an idea I had. Okay. I, why don't I charm him? <laughs> you I have a charm person. <laughs> now I have to make another voice. That's no, they just sound different, trust me. I'm just gonna go to my Blaze voice. No, literally, I listen to the recordings and you two sound exactly the same. In that's recordings. okay. Oh, no. Like the whole time. Dude, it's alright. All right. Well, it is I now, Clayton, Eagle speaking. <laughs> I will say, um, let's. Let's just kill him. I I can also use hold person. How about this? Do we know where this wood is? Where the forest, where the forest is that he's in? Is it nearby? Because if we close the door behind us, we would, no one will see us murderize him. And then we can just make our way back to the city. Fire. We don't need to use <laughs> Save that for later. Let me... How about I charm him when he comes with us through the door and then we murder him? <laughs> but if we close the door behind us, no one will see us in the forest alone with him, so... That's a, exactly. That's my point. So he, we just walk in and close the door, then you don't need to charm him at all. But what if you just want to come fa- with us? Nifan just going to sneak off But he's already there! He doesn't need to come with us! Oh, shit, sure, yeah! <laughs> You're gonna... I'm going to sneak off to talk to him. To talk, <laughs> to talk to Wait, Gavin. No, <laughs> to Gavin? Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, so you've made a decision. Yes, yes. <laughs> Don't <Bye>. say no! <laughs> I grab a bottle at random from my pack and give it to him. Wait! Without looking. Okay, he takes the bottle, he uncorks it, and he inspects it. Roll a... D100 for me. It's just randomly grabbing the bottle. Uh, seven. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, thank you very much for the dragon's blood. And you see as he pours a drop from the bottle, the smallest bit, it is the dragon's blood. Okay. And you gave you him the bottle. Shit! And um, then I go to the door and cast wildfire. <laughs> no, we said no! <laughs> Keep in mind, in my brain, anything higher than 10, you wouldn't have given him the dragon's blood. Okay. <laughs> um, I immediately panic. So, you're just... So, you guys are on the forest. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're leaving. Uh-huh. And you're throwing the scroll in there, and... Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, as you all quickly rush, are you quickly rushing, or are you? No, sorry? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Be- before I throw the scroll, can I say, can we receive payment? <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> Nothing is enrolled yet. Um, we should start pulling the scroll. <laughs> Where's my money, bitch? <laughs> of course, you are entitled to payment. Um, however, I don't keep. The full amount on me, so we are gonna have to go back to my quarters. Then I'll take this back. Uh, he holds the bottle away from you. Whoa! He's <laughs> not grabbing this. <laughs> Thumbs <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> I, I um, walk up and I say, Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Listen, I got some things to say, first of all. What's with the dragon? He told us you were a bad guy. I mean, we killed the dragon! And what? you believe a dragon thinks I'm a bad guy? Yes! I run a city of what people co- here, good what, people. What, what, what color was the dragon again? Brass. 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 Oh, yeah, brass. see, brass! That's a good dragon. And your point is, well, it's a the, dragon. If a good dragon says you're bad, that means you're bad because no. the dragon is good. The dragon you're, could be deceived. Are you racist against dragons? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Listen! Friend. And I put my arm on his shoulder and I cast Charm Person. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's what does he have to uh, beat? Uh, twelve. <laughs> <laughs> what level are you guys Sorry. again? Five. Five. <laughs> That's my spell save DC, dude. I don't know. What that is. <laughs> so pathetic. He beats it. Oh, uh, okay. Um, and he knows you just tried to. Charm he beats him. it with a uh, base of fourteen, added oh, with sorry. six. Uh, oh no, never mind. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, my dragon fellow, what were you trying to do? What did you just do there? I'm just gonna. I give you a big <laughs> hug. And I like that man. I'm gonna make him mock. He he, he, he just like he just kind of pushes you off of him. Oh okay. Don't do that. Oh sorry. Look, I, just... I don't know why you're trying to charm me. Don't even think about it next time. Sorry, I go to. I will have you fall. <laughs> shake his hand. Oh, his hand's kind of up and free in the air, so you do grab it. I catch your person again. <laughs> so yeah, it's a wisdom saving throw. It's gonna be a twelve. He beats it. All right, <laughs> eleven plus six. Fuck. At this point, he sighs and he <laughs> nods his head downward. Uh, he he releases his hand from yours and he says, Just follow me. And you get your payments. I pull out my trident. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'm still hung up about the dragon. However, didn't you have one more? We, we actually. Had two more. Two more. <laughs> and not this person either. <laughs> yeah, the dragon is new. I hire a lot of people in my day to do things. I don't remember every face. So you didn't have one more, you did have one more. Yeah, two more. Yeah, two more. What happened to two more? One of them, somebody pushed him through a magical door, and now he's gone. And then the other one is a pirate who went to go check on his ship. Oh, well, that, which magical door? What magical this door? This magical door is, like, close. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! And it disappears. <laughs> oh, my God. Mm. <laughs> Stifling indeed. But... Tragedy, nonetheless. Uh, all right, well, follow me to my office. All right, you're cool with us after... I don't know what just happened. <laughs> you got me the blood, I pay you, and you'll be on your way and continue on with your lives. All right. Casualties are part of the, the gig. I'm totally. sure you know that. Uh, sorry again for trying to charm you. <laughs> <laughs> high five! <laughs> yeah, it's my arm for a high five. At this time, he looks disgusted. <laughs> And just walks on. <laughs> All right, cool. It's leave me hanging. Um, I, I walk beside Sora. I'm like, are, are, didn't your master say we're supposed to fucking kill kill this guy? Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why don't we just kill him now? Then let's get the payment and then kill him. You're a terrible person. <laughs> 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 All right, we'll switch back to Anos really quick. I don't know, dude. So as you approach the the mountainside, um, it's just mountain rock. You don't see any doorway, nothing. It's just a wall of rock. 
Okay. But the X is marked right here. Well, I know that there's going to be some sneaky ass hidden doorway. So I'm going to look for any sign of that symbol or even just like a keyhole because now I have a secret key that I have no idea what it goes to. Okay, roll um, yeah, investigation with advantage. You got a 12. And 12. Uh, you scan around uh, the rocky surface and it actually doesn't take you as long as you thought. You see... Um, and one more of the jagged edges, there's a pocket uh, leading into the mountain. Very small, though. Like how small? Uh, like the size of a dime. Okay. I'll test my key on it. All right, you take your key, and with the long uh, piece that came from the knob, uh, you shove it into the rock, and you see that a door begins to emerge and construct fancy uh, as you open the door you see snowy lands <laughs> be careful <laughs> close it I open it I dare you um I mean the book led me here I have to trust the book uh I don't want to leave the key though, so I'll see if I can take the key and go through the door at the same time. Uh, as you try to go through the door and pull the key out, uh, the, the key doesn't budge. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll leave the key then and proceed. Okay. It's the magic door. <laughs> uh, as you proceed through the doorway, you are now um, in a snowy region on top of a mountain. Uh, overlooking the land you can see far off in the distance like miles away it looks like at least a couple of weeks ride is the floating city of Ec Cordon <laughs> and you are all the way over here go back inside uh, yeah I'll take a brief look around uh, is there any paths around me there's a very steep path to the left that there's a good chance you'll probably slip and die but that's not always the case Everything around you is just pretty much a steep drop off that goes for about 5,000 feet. Okay. I wish I brought my parachute. <laughs> um, okay. As you stand out, you also know that it's, this region seems to be a little colder than what you're used to, being so high up and all that, that uh, your armor's, um, your steel's hardening quicker than usual. Um, and you notice that frost is beginning to build up on, like, your bracers and your greaves. Well, the book led me here. <laughs> I, I want to go, but I also... I think the book led you to the door. <laughs> but I also am not prepared for this snowy region, so I'm going to go back inside. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, yeah, you go back inside. The door still remains open. What, do you, what would you like to do? I'll try turning the key again. Uh, as you turn the key, you see that there's a quick mist and a spiral, and all of a sudden the scenery changes to green. Uh, green farmlands, so to speak. Uh, okay. And yeah, you see various plains and cottages and barns um, throughout the doorway. Not really where I'm going, so I'll turn the key again. Uh, as you turn the key, another mist spiral, and it is a dark room with a window leading to what seems to be a, a busy street. Sounds more like city than anything you've seen so far. It sounds promising. I'll step into the dark room. Okay, uh, as you do, you take the first step onto some rickety old uh, wooden planks that creak with each uh, the amount of pressure that you place on it. Uh, yeah, it's a little... It's a little drafty in here. There's a small draft, but it's warm air and smells musty, but it's uh, silent. I'll look through the window, see if I recognize any of the sights. As you peek through the window, uh, you see that this is definitely the city of Avec Cordon. Um, you see the busy street in front of you, and then as you look up, you see the second level, the second floating island up in the sky. Well, now that I'm back where I'm supposed to be... Uh... What else is in this room? Mostly, it seems to just be abandoned. It seems like the size of it is basically a shed. 
and there's some a lot of dust, some cobwebs, a couple of old shovels, um, some rope, some barrels. Uh, there's a hook on the wall that has various tools. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll leave that door open because I don't know. I might need to come back later. Okay. Uh, I'll leave the shed and try and find my way back to uh, my companions. Okay. Uh, as you open the the shed door, the the portal door immediately closes behind you. Um, and uh, the sealant is there, although you do see that there is a marking on the, the wood. The okay. same marking you saw before. Uh, and now you are out into the busy street. Um, this point, it's like 2 p.m. So it's, it's, it's definitely a lot busier. You hear people are going for lunch and stuff and taking their breaks. And there's a lot of um, conversations and rabble being had. Uh, the sun is partially out, although clouds keep covering it up every now and then, creating a mountain of shade. And uh, it smells a lot more freeing than that little shack you were in. <laughs> but you're back in the city. Cool. Uh, do I know where I am in the city? Uh, you are on the first level. You seem to be in the residential area. Okay. You're beside a couple of uh, houses. Although you don't know if they're occupied or not, being as this is a bit of a poor area. Yeah. A lot of people can't afford to live here. It's kind of out in the boonies. Yeah. Okay. You are near the one of the affected sites, though, they investigated earlier that were exploded from a combustion of magic. Well, I pretty much came here. I succeeded on what I came here to do, so I'm going to try and find a shop to spend my well-earned money. Okay. Um, what kind of shop are you looking for? Uh, weapon shop. Weapon shop. Uh, you know of a place called uh, Brindlebore, but it's on the second level. It's one that you'd be mostly interested in because the items that they have there typically have um, properties associated to your type of skill work okay to help you achieve it easier i might as well head down there seems interesting okay all right back to Nifan, sora and me again so uh gavin has just led you to an office that actually wasn't far from the shack at all it was just a couple of doors down you can tell that this is definitely not where his actual office is. This is where he does all his shady dealings. Is he in the forest? No, you guys left. Because he's taking you to receive oh, your payment. Oh, I, I closed the door on us when we were in the forest. Oops. That's no. cool. I don't want to be in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. No, you didn't. I, I, I missed... I, I missed... missed, missed. Uh, yeah, so he takes you into this... Um, looks like to be a normal-sized home, but it has no windows. Um, and uh, he just knocks on the door once the door opens nice and steady uh, you guys all go in he closes the door and uh, snaps his fingers and all the torches in the room light up I pull up my driver <laughs> <laughs> back evil sorcerers back <laughs> relax it's just the lighting okay like the clapper what's a clapper never mind that's a different dimension. There's just, you see in this entire room, there's only one table in the center. And he goes to the other side of it. Uh, and then there's, you can kind of see under it that there's a chest on his side that he begins to open. And you hear a bunch of clanging and clinging that sounds like coins. And he then pulls out um, some medium sized pouches, three of them, boom, 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 slams them on the table. He probably has a gun taped at the bottom of the table. Watch <laughs> out. And he begins to close the chest up. I'm going to take my pouch and begin counting each coin individually. It should all be there. Um, Hello! A hundred gold pieces each. This will be about a minute. I'm just going to count out uh, ten different stacks. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's all there. In fact, you actually um, got an extra coin. I don't tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh... I grab my pouch and then I'll say, I'll grab the other two pouches for the other two guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
and I'll grab them and hold on to them. <laughs> yeah, uh, as you pick up those pouches, because uh, he does pull them out and he gives them to you, but they feel a lot heavier than yours. Mm. Uh... <laughs> hey! So, uh, everyone got a hundred gold pieces, right? That's right. Inside check. Right, cool. Yeah, can I can I inside him? <laughs> yeah, and we're like, yeah, these bags. Oh no! These bags don't know what I held a, them. A ten. Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay, you both get the feeling that he's not. You don't believe him, but he's not being totally truthful either. There's definitely something wary. I in will his words. Count each pouch individually. And I take one of the other pouches and I start counting it as well. <laughs> okay. Um. Whose pouch are you taking? Uh, the, I'll, I'll hand mine to you to count. Yeah, I'm going to count E-Fans. Yeah, I'm, really, I'll give I'm counting here. everybody's pouch. Okay. I'm counting uh, all five pouches. Gavin waits there a little annoyed as you take about 15 <laughs> minutes to count I, through these pouches. Math is a tricky <laughs> subject for everyone. It's important that we go through this. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, Gavin, you know, we just want to make sure everything goes right. You know, sometimes things go wrong. And I go to put my hand on his back. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like to pat him on the back, yeah. like, you know, it's like, ah, hey, you know, and I can't. <laughs> God damn it, man! <laughs> Wisdom saving th- being in twelve. Sixteen. <laughs> Ten ah. plus six. <laughs> Please stop trying. I'm so close. <laughs> Why does he have a wisdom saving throw of six? He's a fucking wizard. He's like the head wizard of the I city. Don't care. Her. <laughs> damn it! Um, I'm gonna piss him off. <laughs> We're gonna kill him anyway. Uh, he, <laughs> he sighs at you and again just shakes your hand off. At this point, he, just, he doesn't want to say any words. He's uh, just disappointed in your magical. Mia Gwyn, as you begin counting, as you finish counting um, Sora's pouch, it takes you a lot quicker as there's only 50 gold pieces. <laughs> Everyone else has 100 though? Everyone else has 100. You have one extra one. Hey, Ga- oh, I'm not giving, I'm not giving <laughs> Sora my extra gold. Hey, Gavin, I just really noticed that you only gave. Uh, Sora, 50 gold pieces instead of 100 like everyone else got? Uh, indeed. I deducted a certain amount each time she tried to cast a spell on me. <laughs> don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I do not appreciate that. All good. Uh, <laughs> I'll just take the gold and I'll hold on to the other two for the other two guys. And I take the other Here. two as well. Uh, you hold mine too. All right. <laughs> hold on to this as well. All right. <laughs> Business is finished. I don't have to deal with you people anymore on uh, to the next business proposition we have murder <laughs> and I pull up my trident and I throw it at him <laughs> <laughs> roll the hit you I, wouldn't be expecting I also pull out my uh, do I get advantage then you get advantage cause he, he, yeah oh no <laughs> that one was weird Almost rolled a one. You three are gonna die. <laughs> I'm gonna be happy with you. What, what, what is a trident? I'm um, gonna leave the town. Trident is. When do you, how do you, versatile. What does that mean? Oh, throne. Uh, so I have my dex, right? Or my strength. Yeah. No. It's your strength. trident? Strength. Yeah. Because yeah, your yeah. strength. You're throwing it. Okay, so plus three is 22. Yep. I mean, 21. Sorry. 21 that hits okay so that deals if i throw it does it just do a 1d6 because it says versatile 1d8 i know that means like a two-handed it's like 1d8 if it's a thrown weapon thrown. then it does its normal damage yeah okay if so. it's not labeled a thrown weapon it does improvised damage right so i roll this and then i add my strength again no just straight okay six that's it i rolled a six Did you have your proficiency <gasps> That's what I forgot to add. Well, you add proficiency to like two hit, not damage. Oh yeah, it's yeah. two hit. Do I add right. my strength to the damage? Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So nine strength. damage. Nine damage. Um, in this moment of um intensity, can I also cast hold person on him? <laughs> Dude, your spells aren't gonna work. It will work. What's the DC on this one? Twelve. Yeah, it's just my spell save it easier. Uh, yeah, so as you but. go and you just wh- whirl your trident towards him, it jabs right in his shoulder, mm. and he gets knocked back from the force onto the ground. He's uh, prone? Lying prone. Yeah! <laughs> Got him! <laughs> Does this place look lampo? No! 
it's it's yeah i guess it's all wood so it's flammable it is flammable um indeed can i cast hold person on him <laughs> as, as he are we getting like fell a on the ground prize right yeah yeah Oh, six, 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 six. It's gonna happen. You just throw your tried and then. Yeah, yeah I want to cast whole person. Go. Okay, and he's got to so, be. He's a wisdom saving throw, and again, it's just my <laughs> spell save of twelve. He beats it. Thirteen <laughs> plus six. Okay. Dog. He, he keeps rolling average, but his plus six is killing me, bros. <laughs> He no, really has to roll shitty. a five yeah. for you to succeed. Yo, <laughs> your um, shitty DC is killing you. <laughs> As you try to hold him onto the floor, you see that for a moment he does stop perfectly still, but then quickly he like almost vibrates at a incredibly high frequency and just okay. shakes out of it. When when I when I hold him for that uh, split second, I'm like, take that! <laughs> and then he like, breaks out my like, oh, no. <laughs> Wait, I forgot to use my extra attack. <laughs> you only get one attack. Damn. For surprise round. That's fine. Um, <laughs> all right, Nifan. Uh, I'm just going to shoot my short bow at him this round. Okay. I'll start the fire next round. I still have my glaive. Ten. So we're good. That misses. Uh, as you go to fire off your crossbow, at this point he's a little more alert to the situation. Oh, do I have advantage since he's prone? Oh, he is prone. You do have advantage. Thank you for letting me know that. Still a tennis, my heart. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, you fire off your bolt, and he sees you getting ready to fire directly at him, and he just hurls his shoulder out of the way, and it nicks in the wood right beside him. Uh, Now everyone can roll initiative. Yay! (laughs) And a seven. That's you two. two. Really? Roll initiative. I got a seven. (laughs) Okay. I got a nine. You got a nine? Um, Seven. Just so you guys know, I'm completely useless in battle. Me too. I'm a halfling that has a maul, the long bowl, and a bike crossbow, and I have disadvantage on two of my weapons. Okay, so you I, got seven. I am not bad in battle. <laughs> I'm a rogue with low dexterity. Uh, Sora, what did you get? I got a seven. Uh, seven. Why did you guys? And uh, me again. Sixteen. Wow. I have a minus two. <laughs> Jesus. All right, and that is where we'll leave off on this session of the improvised Nat 20. Thank you all so much for joining us. <laughs>